Okay, so now over there you would think, oh, that's as, that's as easy, that's, that's not bad. How bad, how, how could he make this bad? Okay, here we go. One. Let's think of different cases though. Do things really often just sit and float neutral in a solution? No. They either sink or they go to the top. If they go to the top, then what happens? Who knows? Let's look at it this way. Let's say, what if the sum of the forces in the y is greater than zero? Right? So here's our answer, basically. Um, this is the sum of the forces in the y greater than zero. So we could say, uh, what if minus mg uh, plus rho gv, right? rho gv of the cube, is greater than zero, then that makes something happen. That means that uh, this term, uh, we can cancel the g's, is that rho v is greater than m, right? So what that means is the mass the water displaced is, is uh, greater than the mass of the object. All right, so what does that mean? It's going to get pushed up um, with a, a buoyant force bigger than its weight. So it's going to accelerate up, and maybe there's a way to launch like spaceships into space, right? No. Right, it's going to do that. So what this means is if you have it sitting like this, do, 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 do. And you have this condition that there's a force pushing it up. It must be that the buoyant force is bigger than the weight. So that's where you're going to end up with a floating a situation where you're floating. So once the thing leaves the water, then the buoyant force starts to decrease. Right? Because now it's displaced less. There's, it ran out of fluid. Right? So the buoyant force decreases. And it's going to go until this force is equal to zero. Right? So it's going to, so the uh, it'll, floating, it'll rise until the buoyant force equals the weight, force mg. Okay? And you can basically work that out. You can say, okay, let's equate these two things. Right? So let's say when these two are equal, when the uh, for, sum of the forces on the y equals zero, that's the case where rho gv rho g v equals mg, the weight. But now the v is different, right? This was the v of the object, right? Um, but now we're talking about the v sort of of the displaced fluid, right? This is now the part that matters right here. Like that, right? V of the displaced fluid. So basically, when something starts to float, the buoyant force goes down because it's displacing less water. Okay. So that's why now we need to take this equation and say, no, now we just mean the displaced part, like that. Right? And where am I trying to go with this? Um, and this is the row of the fluid, right? That always was the row of the fluid. So what we can do now, it's kind of interesting, is rewrite the right side a little bit, this boring old mg. Right? So let's get rid of the gravities and say the row of the fluid times the volume that it's displaced but what is the mass of the cube? It's the rho of the mass, right? It's the rho of the object. It's density times the volume of the object. Right. So this basically tells you how high something floats. Okay, so let's look. Let's uh, rearrange it a little bit and say, well, the volume displaced over the volume of the object. What fraction of its uh, volume is display uh, goes into the water? No, it's just the ratio of the two densities. Right, the row of the object over the row of the fluid. Okay. So the two equations today, that one and then some of the forces or you know, adding up the forces equals m equals zero. But this basically tells you how high something floats. So if a problem's asking, you know, is the block what fraction of the block is up in the air? It's just the ratio of the densities of the block and the fluid. So you can see if the thing is less dense than the fluid. It's going to float. This number is less than 1, and you don't displace the whole volume of the object. This number is less than 1. So maybe you only displace like half, like I drew here. Okay. This also is the reason uh, that icebergs are so dangerous. Right? So if we think about an iceberg doing this, um, let's see. So iceberg, you see, draw. Oh, it's a Hershey kiss. No, it's an iceberg. They're always like that. You, know, you see this, and you don't know this is down here. Why? 
because ice increases its density uh, when uh, or the, the density of ice is uh, lower than the density of water. Right? So the density of the ice is like point, you know rho for water we've talked about is a thousand, and rho for ice is like 970, something like that. So the row of the object is very close to the row of the water. Right? So what that means is this close number is very close to 1. This number is very close to 1. You almost displace the whole thing. So you only have like 90% of the icebergs underwater, and 10% is above the water. Right? Mm. Let's see. So let's do one problem for fun, then we'll get out of here. Because uh, I want to talk about neutral buoyancy, but I forgot to bring the demo. So. Tuesday we'll do a neutral buoyancy. But here's an example of how we can make this fun. You ready? Here would be a classic, classic problem. Oh, water. Something that wants to float, but it can't because it's tied by a string. Ooh. So this object has a row of, I forgot, I think S was supposed to be styrofoam. And you have a row of the fluid, and it has psi D, right? And row S is less than row of the fluid. What's the tension in the string? Ah, so you could do that, right? Let's all do it together. Let's see. The first thing I'd look at and say, is it static? Yes, it's static. All right, so static. We would have told you in the problem it's static, probably. Some of the forces in the y is 0. Right? So now let's just think about the mass, the little object, and say, OK, what are all the forces? Let's see. Mg is down. Right, we always have y going up. Right. Mg is down. Uh, the buoyant force is up, and it's equal to the rho of the fluid times the uh, volume times the density. <laughs> the rho of the fluid times the volume of the cube. So d cubed uh, times g. I knew I was missing something. <laughs> right, that's the buoyant force up. And now, what about the tension, the force of tension? It's down. It's holding it down, minus Ft. If you're trying to use your intuition, you would have said, it wants to float. This is bigger than this. So we need more negative force to keep it at 0. So you spin that around, and you get uh, that uh, the force due to tension, this would probably be like a symbolic problem, is rho of the fluid minus rho of the object, the styrofoam, times d cubed times g. So we have ways we can sort of combine these with other things. Right? What if it was a sphere, though? Oh, no. Then you would just be a, if it's a sphere, remember, this is just the volume. It doesn't have to be a cube for these formulas to work. All this formula cares about is the volume here. So this would be the volume of a sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed, I think. Yeah. Because it's a volume, right? So it's a cube with volume d cubed. So in the formula here, we had the volume. Yeah, there it is. OK. You've had enough. We've all had enough. Tuesday, we'll do more fun fluids, though.